President Buhari Kanvasi's single unified market for increased trade in Africa as 30th ordinary session of assembly of heads of state and government of AU draws to a close in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. At the end of the day, now that the vote counts, that is what you can use. The words 2019 general elections, issues of functional political party system get on the front burner. There will be teething problems when you start your business. Please don't relent, don't fall back. Seek help. Federal government's commitment to youth empowerment gets a boost. 11,000 youths graduate in business skills. And parade of honor for late former Vice President Alex Ekweme, body leaves Abuja for final journey home. Good evening, this is NTA Network News. I am Donald Overijo. Joining other veterans in the celebration to mark NTA at 40. It's nice to be back on set of the largest television network in Africa, and I'll be doing what we know how to do best for the rest of the week. Tonight, Shen Olagunju will take the lead. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Donald. It's good to see you, at least for the rest of the week. And looking forward to seeing you read the news tomorrow in full. But for tonight, Ademola Adeo is joining me in Lagos. Caleb Goching is in Joss, while Chingiri is in Inugo. Thank you very much for joining us. Nigeria has challenged African leaders and other principal architects of the African Union to speed up action towards the establishment of free trade area for the continent. President Muhammad Buhari, who threw the challenge at the ongoing summit of the African Union, said this will provide the continent with tremendous opportunity to achieve a significant growth driven by intra-African trade. State House correspondent Adam Osambo has the report. President Muhammad Buhari was reacting to issues in the progress report on the continental free trade area submitted at plenary by his Nigerian counterpart Muhammad Isufu, who spearheaded the project. Speaking at a closed session, President Buhari said the stakes in the establishment of the continental free trade area are very high and the benefits are wide-ranging and significant. A single unified market, he said, would lead to a comprehensive and mutually trade agreement amongst African Union members. The president was emphatic that if Africa's market are integrated for trade in goods and services, intra-Africa trade will not only be enhanced but also the capacity to negotiate with other regions and continents on trade matters. As he puts it, if we increase our trade, we grow faster, create more jobs and reduce poverty. Thus, with the continental free trade area, our continent will be more integrated, united and prosperous. The establishment of the trade-free area, the President explained, is the first step for the African Union in the implementation of Agenda 2063 for socio-economic transformation of the continent as well as being a building block in the achievement of the goals of the 1991 Abuja Treaty on the African Economic Community. Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Onyema and a renowned diplomat, Professor Ibrahim Gambri, attended the session. It was extremely well received. Um, you know, he pointed out the benefits for Africa of a continental free trade area and that this really would be a game changer as far as um, the economy of uh, Africa is uh, concerned. So he, he, he made a very, very well structured argument for it and uh, he ended it by um, exhorting um, all the other African countries to adopt the report. So on the basis of that, on March the 21st uh, in Kigali, there will now be a summit meeting to launch the African um, continental free trade uh, area. It's about the future of Africa, the proportion of trade among us is very small and yet the prosperity of the continent depends on enhancing the value of the trade between us. The report, thoroughly analyzed by President Muhammad Buhari and other African leaders, was emphatic that the continental free trade area, or free market as it is called, will be another major step in uniting Africa, generating more economic growth, enhancing efficiency and consolidating the architecture of the African Union.
from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Well, on the summit, President Nana Akufo Addo of Ghana and other members of the diplomatic community have reacted to the endorsement of President Muhammad Buhari as the champion for the fight against corruption in Africa, describing it as well thought out and highly befitting. They spoke to correspondent Adam Sambo on the sidelines of the ongoing summit of the African Union. It was a defining moment for Nigeria, as well as a remarkable demonstration of honor, respect, and appreciation for President Muhammad Buhari as he mounted the rostrum to launch a major crusade against corruption on the African continent as champion for the year 2018. Corruption erodes the development of a universal culture of good governance, democratic values, gender equality, respect for human rights, justice and the rule of law. We must therefore work together to defeat this evil. President Nana Akufo Addo of Ghana and other diplomats spoken to express confidence in the ability of President Muhammad Buhari to spearhead the renewed onslaught against corruption in Africa because of the way and manner he confronted the scorch headlong in Nigeria. Very, very important for the continent. And I think that the statement made by President Buhari was exactly what this organization needed to hear. Um, I'm very happy about it. And I'm hoping that the rest of us will support the recommendations and the processes that he has initiated. As South Sudan, we are very proud of the effort of uh, President Buhari. Corruptions deny opportunity for children to go to schools, deny opportunity to build schools, deny opportunity for us Africans to connect ourselves, deny opportunity for food security in Africa. South Sudan would like to learn from the experience and the, the roadmap laid by Its Excellency President Buhari. It's something we look forward for and we would like to see we will support it 100%. President Buhari is champion in Africa's fight against corruption this time around. Uh, he's, a good, he's a good person to fight against corruption. He's the person who can really take that responsibility and fight against corruption and show yeah, to the rest of Africa the way and the path how to fight against that. And uh, I, I think that the, gen, the, the young generation and uh, must take you know, this example and help him. Why do you think President Buhari has been selected as champion? Oh, well, very obvious that uh, he's one of the few African leaders that has made this a major plank. And uh, it's not just about talk, but actually action. So I think it's because of uh, his commitment to this fight against corruption uh, and his determination to ensure that uh, public funds are used for public purposes. Uh, I think it's an appropriate choice, uh, but then it means that uh, more is expected of him and of us. Both the Minister of Justice, Abu Bakar Malami, and the Acting Chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, expressed delight over the recognition of Nigeria's success story in the fight against corruption and pledged to do more in supporting President Buhari in his new assignment. And Mr. President is indeed winning the fight against corruption and is indeed winning, setting the fight for sustainable development of Nigeria and indeed the African nation. So that is the starting point. Well, one of the things the President needs to do is that to encourage other African head of state to buy in into what we are doing so that there should be sufficient political goodwill, sufficient commitment. That is what is driving the anti-corruption in Nigeria. Political goodwill, leadership. The president is committed. We will not be deterred. We will have to continue fighting the corruption. In fact, I am more encouraged when I discover that they are fighting us, they are chasing us around. We will continue to chase them. There is no way you can escape. The theme for this year's AU summit is winning the fight against corruption, a sustainable path to Africa's transformation. From Addis Ababa. In the meantime, Nigeria's efforts at reducing the burden of HIV AIDS and the contribution of the future assured program of the wife of the president, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, received special acknowledgement at the 20th Ordinary Assembly of the Organization of African First Ladies Against HIV AIDS in Addis Ababa. Makut Simon Macham reports. The continent 
The organization of African First Ladies has been contributing to this fight through its networking and country-based activities. At the 28th Ordinary General Assembly in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, they are prioritizing on children, adolescents, and mothers in the fight against the disease. Wife of Nigeria's President Aisha Muhammad Buhari was represented at the meeting by wives of governors of Borno, Abia, and Jigao states, as well as the senior special assistant to the president. She reiterated her commitment in the fight against HIV and AIDS in Nigeria, and I'm happy during the presentation of the uh, president of Okla, uh, the first lady of Ethiopia, we are able to mention, as well as that of the United Nations and the UN Secretary General on HIV and AIDS, Mr. Michel Sidibe, they identify Nigeria uh, that has uh, success stories and lessons to learn on the uh, number of strategies on the fight against HIV AIDS in Nigeria. The wives of governors say they have learned valuable lessons which they intend to implement at home through collaboration with the future assured program of the wife of the president. Sincerely speaking, she deserves a, uh, deserve a commendation. She has done a lot and she's still doing it. So across the board, uh, I want the, the main counterpart to give us all the necessary support. I want to thank her for the efforts and the fact she's giving to the uh, question of the the HIV and S. I have learned a lot of lessons. We now go to our states to go and do more enlightenment. The organization also signed a memorandum of understanding with new partners in order to strengthen the fight against the disease on the continent. From Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, I am Makut Simon Machan, NT News. To party politics now, the All Progressives Congress, APC, says its motive for restructuring is anchored in improving governance and national cohesion. This was confirmed by the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Balaji Abdullahi, when he joined other guests in discussing the APC Restructuring Committee report on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria. Lydia Samsing has the details. Balaji Abdullahi was emphatic that the APC report on restructuring is not negotiating the existence of Nigeria as a corporate entity, but more of seeking better ways to make Nigeria work for the good of our citizenry. This, according to him, is why the committee interfaced widely with Nigerians to arrive at their recommendations. Give us the benefit of the doubt. We promise Nigerians and we are taking massive steps, even where we are today. Because, look, we are the custodian of the status quo as it were, as a ruling party. But we are making recommendations that patiently subvert that status quo. I believe that uh, we have taken a massive step. We don't think it's late in the day. Justin Good Morning Nigeria, however, expressed divergent views. While some said it is a welcome development that the APC has articulated their input in the national debate. Something like restructuring exists in the APC constitution, but since it came to power, we have had a lot of uh, discordant tunes among individuals and groups within the party as to the exact position of the party on the restructuring. And what the APC has done is its own standpoint. It would be very nice for the operational party as well to also articulate what it means by restructuring because a good segment of the Nigerian population is demanding it. So the common denominator there is the people. So no matter how the party feels on an issue like this, it still has to take it through the people. And that is what that panel has done and has now come up with um, um, recommendations that I think are quite laudable. The guests, however, noted that positive contributions from previous recommendations should equally be recognized and allowed to impact on the final report for the good of the country and her people. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. The Independent National Electoral Commission says its earlier released timetable and scheduled activities for the 2019 elections stand pending any amendment of the Electoral Act and its assent into law by the President. The INEC National Commissioner and Chairman, the Electoral Institute, Professor Kichuku Ibano, stated this at the 14th public lecture of the Institute in Abuja. Political correspondent Abdullahi Garbabrini Kudu reports. There is a window of more than six months for the amendment of Electoral Act before any general election. For now, the House of Representatives has passed some sections of the amended Electoral Act but will only be effective after its harmonization by both chambers of the National Assembly. 
of interest to many Nigerians is the sequence of the election, which the proposed amendment by the House of Representatives has altered. It remains to be seen. Like I said, uh, the role of INEC is to conduct elections based on the law. And if there is a legitimate amendment to the Electoral Act, INEC will implement it. The 14th public lecture of the Electoral Institute, delivered by Professor Abjibril Ibrahim, has a theme towards 2019 general elections, political parties and internet democracy. Moving forward is that of civic education. That at the end of the day, now that the vote counts, that is what you can use to make parties sensible. We must continue to move in that direction of ensuring that votes are counted and the votes count internal democracy where nobody is just changed nobody is uh, you know denied uh, what he naturally benefits the lecture was dedicated to the pioneer director general of the institute professor abubakar momo who died in may 2017 in abuja abdullahi garba Kudu. NTA News. Still on elections, Britain is set to partner with the Nigerian government to conduct credible general elections next year. This was made known when a delegation of the British Foreign and Commonwealth Office visited the National Secretariat of the All Progressives Congress in Abuja. Salihu Abdullahi reports. The visit by delegation of the British government is part of pre-election processes and to show support through partnership for political development in Nigeria. After a closed-door meeting with the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, John Odige Oyegun, leader of the delegation, Rob Dixon, spoke to the media on the excellence of his visit. So uh, we talked about the breadth of the UK's relationship, whether it is uh, what we are doing to help Nigeria fight uh, Boko Haram in the northeast or to support economic development across the country. Uh, and we talked about our shared interests for um, a, a smooth and peaceful election and, uh, and what the, the, uh, the prospects for the campaign might, uh, might be over the course of the next 12 months. Relationship between Nigeria and the United Kingdom has been a long one. In fact, of all these, against the backdrop of the association of the two countries from pre to independent Nigeria, a visit such as this is not surprising even though Nigeria is currently practicing democratic system of government as against the parliamentary system it inherited from the Britain. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. Time now to take some messages. More reports when we return. Stay with us. This organization of Nigeria, SON, brings a new lease of life to Nigeria SMEs. SON has put a greater premium on developing standards to improve made in Nigeria products for export. We have developed more standards for products like Sesame, Coco, Gary and more, courtesy of our accredited state-of-the-art laboratories. In keeping with the federal government's ease of doing business, SON has simplified its processes and turned around time for SONCAP, MANCAP and other certification processes. SON has intensified market service raids and seizures to reduce substandard products in circulation and offenders shall be prosecuted join son in reading our nation of substandard products if you see something say something standards organization of nigeria improving lives through standards. the vice chancellor professor abdullahi bala on behalf of council senate staff and students of the federal university of technology mina clearly invites the public to the university's 27th convocation ceremony for the confinement of first degrees postgraduate diplomas and higher degrees. Date Thursday, 1st February 2018. Time 10 a.m. Venue Main Campus. The convocation lecture will be delivered by Professor Sage Isejua Esajumi, Chairman, Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. Date Wednesday, 31st January 2018. Time 3 p.m. Venue Main Campus. For details and live streaming, visit the university website www.futuminad.edu.ng. Mrs. Victoria N. Kulu, Registrar and Secretary to Council announcer. The public presentation of the report of the All Progressive Congress APC Committee on True Federalism shall take place as follows. Date Wednesday, 31st January 2018. Venue Ladi All Sheraton Hotel, Abuja. Time 10 a.m. prompt. 
panelists will include Chief John Odige Oyegun, APC National Chairman, Malam Nasir El Rufai, Governor of Kaduna State and Chairman, APC Committee on True Federalism. Mr. Wale Oshun, Public Affairs Analyst and APC Leader, Ajia Aishatu Ismail, former Minister of Women Affairs, Mr. Patrick Okibo, Principal Partner, Next Year and Public Affairs Analyst, Malam Bolaji Abdullahi, APC National Publicity Secretary, and Elsa. The Federal Capital Territory Administration hereby invites members of all the newly reconstructed boards of FCT agencies and power status, except the FCT Water Board, to the formal inauguration of the boards by the FCT Minister, Malam Mohammed Musabelo, date Tuesday, January 30th, 2018, venue International Conference Center, Area 10, Gariki, Abuja, time 11 a.m. Accommodation has been reserved for members coming from outside Abuja. For details, please contact the following numbers. Habu on 0803704574. Kuma on 0817322932 or Abduraza 0803458 sign Sir Chinyaka or her permanent secretary. What's the right in the window? So fast, please. Yo, this is not my indomie. Please, sir, it's not indom. Don't call it indom. Sir, the taste is the difference. The difference is in the taste. That's why my brothers, my mommy, my daddy, and I all enjoy a delicious, so very delicious indomie. <laughs> The difference is the taste. The Office of the Accountant General of the Federation quarterly invites state commissioners for finance, state accountants general, directors of finance and accounts, directors internal audits, heads of accounts and internal audits, government-owned corporations, service-wide, and other stakeholders from the organized private sector to the second annual National Treasury Workshop. Theme, Economic Recovery and Great Plan, a potent tool for the nation's treasury management. Date, Wednesday, 31st January to Friday, 2nd February, 2018. Venue, Tinapa Lakeside Hotel, Calabar, Cross River State. Time, 9 a.m. daily. The workshop will be declared open by the Honorable Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshin. Chief Host, His Excellency, Senator Professor Ben Ayade, Executive Governor, Cross River State. You are welcome. Ahmed Idris, Accountant General of the Federation, announcer. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policy? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Thanks for staying with us on the Network News. Now, the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, says it will collaborate with the Institute of Directors Nigeria to promote effective corporate governance for safety and stability of Nigeria's banking sector. The managing director of the corporation, Umar Ibrahim, stated this while receiving the members of the Governing Council of Institute of Directors Nigeria in Abuja. Musa Abubakar reports. Factors such as poor corporate governance practices, inadequate disclosure and transparency regimes are said to have contributed to the banking crisis experienced in the country in 2009. Since then, regulators and major players in the sector have continued to come up with ways to avert a repeat of the crisis. The synergy between the organizations is one of such efforts aimed at strengthening corporate governance through rigorous selection system and capacity building of independent directors of banks in line with international best practices. In other institutions, the Chatham Institute of Bankers, Financial uh, FITC, the Society for Corporate Governance, I think all of you coming together to tackle issues that border on 
corporate governance in Nigeria go a long way in transforming the landscape. Uh, the FRC and IOD are working very closely together. We are happy with the corporate governance However, we were invited to make serious comments on the uh, code. We did, and we are participating uh, again uh, with the uh, cooperation. We try to get the right corporate governance as well. The synergy is expected to build a solid foundation for businesses in the country. In Abuja, Musa Abubakar, NTA News. So youth empowerment now, over 11,000 youth who have undergone a three-month intensive training in several skills at the instance of the federal government have been presented with starter parks. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday reports that the youth were charged not to toy with their destiny, but rather to prove to the world that the three months training was worth the while. Nigeria, with over 180 million people, over 60% of the country's population are youth. Records from the National Bureau of Statistics show that unemployment rate in Nigeria stands at about 17% in the second quarter of 2017. <laughs> Towards reducing the rate of unemployment in Nigeria, these youths drawn from all the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory FCT were trained in fashion designing, welding and fabrication, plumbing and pipe fitting. Minister of State, Trade and Investment, Aisha Abubakar, urged the youth to remain focused as the present administration is committed towards making life better for the citizenry. Please don't relent, don't fall back. Seek help. You need to have proper business plans. You need to seek financial assistance. You also need to seek staff that will assist you in running your businesses. The startup parks would be like the proverbial mustard seed which will, by the grace of God Almighty, blossom into a mighty tree that will provide shade and food for many people. Thank you today for this training you've given us, and we promise you that we'll put into place everything we've learned and we'll move Nigeria forward. Director General of the Industrial Training Fund, Joseph Ari, led the minister and other delegates to the exhibition stands of the graduates. The training is the third in the series. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Over 5,000 internally displaced persons have benefited from the intervention of the National Commission for Refugees and Internally Displaced Persons in Kebi State. Usman Abdullahi Shehu reports that the Federal Commissioner, Hajia Sadia Umar Farouk, flagged off the items for distribution in Kamba, Kayama and Bunza. The intervention are economic empowerment materials that include sewing machine, grinding machines and livestock. Other items are building materials that include cement, roofing sheets and timber among others. The rest are food items like rice, millet, sorghum and cooking oil. The Federal Commissioner National Commission for Refugees, Migrant and Internally Displaced Persons, Hajia Sadia Umar Farouk, said the Commission is committed to ensuring lasting solution for the persons of concern who are displaced by man-made or natural disaster, as keen into plans and programs of President Muhammad Buhari for the persons of concern in the country. Hajia Sadia Umar Farouk described economic empowerment as the key ingredient in addressing the plight of the people of concern. She said the Commission will continue to provide opportunities for the people to help them regain their dignity among the society. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, represented by Secretary to Kebi State Government Al Haji Babale Umar Yawuri, lauded the commitment of the Commission and registered the state government support to help the people back to their feet. Some of the beneficiaries expressed gratitude for the gesture and assured judicious use of the intervention items. The Federal Commissioner similarly commissioned a training and skill acquisition center in Bunza where the persons of concern will receive their training. In Burning Kebi, Usman Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. A Nigerian Air Force remotely piloted aircraft, RPA, has destroyed an artillery gun and some gun trucks belonging to Boko Haram terrorists. A statement by the Director of Public Relations and Information, Nigeria Air Force 
Air Vice Marshal Olatokumba Desoya says the insurgents were spotted in Sambisa Forest retreating with the artillery gun and gun trucks after a suspected failed operation. The statement asks that the NAF RPA on acquiring their location neutralized some of the insurgents and destroyed the equipment while others fled the site of the explosion. It's time now to join Ademola in Lagos for more reports. Ademola, it's over to you. And a warm welcome to Lagos. The Senate Committee on Navy has stressed the need for improved funding of the Nigerian Navy in the face of increasing threats on the, international, on the Nigerian territorial waters. The chairman of the committee, Senator Issa Misao, made this remark after inspecting facilities at the Western Naval Command Abapa and Naval Base Ojo in Lagos. The visit by the Senate Committee on Navy provided a better understanding for the members on the urgent demand of the Navy. At the Western Naval Command and Naval Training Command, they were briefed on the operations of the command and their challenges. The Navy, in trying to keep to its mandate, has reduced to the barest minimum all illegalities that take place at our maritime environment. Thereafter, members of the committee inspected facilities and ongoing projects at the naval base in Apapa. At the naval base, Ojo, members of the committee saw demonstration by personnel of the Special Boat Service on Anti-Terrorism and Air Operation. Chairman Senate Committee on Navy said the time has come for the Navy to be given full support as they protect the country. What we are going to do as a committee, we will try as much as possible to see outside the envelope if we can get maybe assistance from NNPC, CBN, NIMASA and other agencies that are benefiting from the Navy if we can get uh, assistance for them and because of the role the Navy is playing, you know, we just need to assist them as, uh, in the National Assembly. The committee is expected to visit other naval bases across the country in continuation of its oversight function. Pursuant to its operational model hinged on community involvement and participation in the oil and gas explorations, the Lima Oil Producing Limited has rolled out its educational support initiative through the award of scholarship to students in its host communities. 374 post-primary, undergraduate, and postgraduate students benefited from the scholarship award. Some of the Belima Oil NMPC Joint Venture Scholarship Award were drawn from Kula, Idama, Abuluma, Boni, and other communities playing host to the company. For the oil giant Belima Oil, this gesture is the beginning of its initiative to open vista opportunities for the educational advancement of the people. It's over 70 million naira check given today, and we have other students in Cyprus, we have students in the UK, we have students in America, Canada, Ghana, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, and Nigerian schools. And what we have done is not just to show wealth, but wealth in the hearts and minds of the people, so they will in turn do the same for the society when they come out. The whole community, we don't just see them as people working for us. Our people will just hand down salaries in some areas. It's all inclusive. So they see Belema Oya as their own. 121 secondary school students got 60,000 naira, while 175 undergraduates received 200,000 naira each. 300,000 naira each was given to 75 postgraduate students. This is the first time an indigenous company is giving us scholarship, and I think it's a very good gesture, and it's something that you know that is uh, commendable. I say thank you to the Lama Oil for giving me the opportunity to have my scholarship for one year. The community and uh, both the beneficiary are so excited that with this static uh, education will highly improve in our various uh, community. The 2017 Belma Oil Scholarship Scheme is for one year and renewable subject to the academic performance of the beneficiaries. You're still watching NTA Network News. We now take a break for some messages after which the news returns. Stay with us. Of other states, invites the general public to the other state's security forum launch and public presentation. Date 20 January 2018. Venue 
Bank International Conference Center over here. Time 11 a.m. Sibling Guest of Honor, His Excellency Alahaji Atiku Abubakar, Chairman Ben Sole Aku, Sultan, Chief Launcher Alahaji Dr. Ali Kodan Bote, CON, Enemies of all banks in Abia State, Captains of Industry and Friends of Abia State, Mr. Ibrahim Kotu Egypt, Mr. General of Police, all those with the Governor, Ordinaka Igwe, Co Chairman, His Excellency Victor Okeze Ibazu, Governor of Abia State, Chief Post, Announcer. During an emergency, people tend to run away from the scene of danger. My job requires that I do the exact opposite. To save people, there was once a sweet girl who was in a car accident. It was sad to see pain on her face which should always be smiling. The ordeal had taken a toll on me, but I had no time for pain. A couple of weeks later, I was about to head home when I had an unexpected visitor. It was her birthday and she had insisted to her mother that she bring a piece of cake for the man who helped save her life. The world needs people who save lives. When I was a little girl, I loved spending time with mum and grandma cleaning the house. I knew what grandma's secret was. I was so excited to sing in the choir. And your shirts are always so white. I knew what mum's secret was. Today, I'm a modern woman that still trusts the secrets passed down to me. It's Jick, of course. The trusted bleach which can be used all around your house for amazing results. Shh, it's a little secret. It's no secret. Jick removes 101 stains. Just Jick it. Sensitivity is a short pain which occurs when teeth are exposed to hot, cold or acidic things. Cold water from the fridge would, would trigger off sensitivity. A lot of people would accept anyway and just grin and bear the pain. What I would say to the patient is switch to Sensodyne, make it your daily toothpaste over a period of time would reduce with sensitivity and a lot of them come back to you know to thank me to say that wow it's just something so simple it adds the sparkle back into their life cold and flu can spread through the contact of hands and in such situations i can't risk falling ill so i recommend Dettol, as it protects from up to 100 illness causing germs that's why I want to be Dettol Sure. Dettol, be 100. The winning energy and great Milo taste. Now ready to go. The winning energy and great Milo taste. Now ready to go. The winning energy and great Milo taste. Now ready to go. How could Nasi people watch be this so? Emanuela, go enjoy. Everybody, take comments for an call. Comments is easy to use, just tear, drink, Comix. Now easy to use solution for itchy cops. No cop! No Comics, easy to use. Ariwaka. Who wants to answer? Mary? Mommy has a tooth scale. Oh, I see. And who knows why? Because her tooth is too big. No. It might be a hole in her tooth called a cavity. That's why I brush twice a day using Colgate. Imagine this is your tooth and these are food acids that cause cavities. Colgate with calcium and fluoride helps prevent cavities for maximum cavity protection. And now available in a fresh new icy mint gel. Wow. Take a good look at our world today and you'll discover something interesting. More and more drivers are choosing mobile motor oils. You see, as engine performance becomes more important than ever, the vehicle owners are coming to expect more from their engine oils. They're demanding more mileage on a single oil change. They're demanding longer lasting engines and smoother rides. They're demanding the best. And with mobile, that's what they get. We raise the bar for motor oils with the mobile Super 1000. And with the Mobile One, we raised it even higher. And because it's made using the most advanced engineering processes, Mobile Motor Oils leave your engine super clean, increase its durability, and keep it so well protected, <laughs> it never stops running. So if success for you depends on continuous movement, you need engine oil, engineered for that purpose. Mobile. Performance at its best. Make it mobile! And we will be heading to our Joel studio now where Caleb has the next set of reports. Hello, Caleb. It's over to you. Thank you, Joel, and welcome.
As Nigeria joins the international community to mark the World Leprosy Day, the need to care for people living with leprosy, an ancient disease that is prevalent in Africa and Asia, continues to get attention. Ijoma Ozamina examines this year's theme, Zero Disabilities in Girls and Boys, against the backdrop of efforts to tackle the disease in Plateau State. Their discretion is, however, advised as some of the pictures could be disturbing. World Leprosy Day is observed internationally on the 30th of January or its nearest Sunday in commemoration of the date of Gandhi, the leader of India and advocate for victims of leprosy. Leprosy or Hansen's disease is an infection that causes severe disfiguring skin sores and nerve damage in the arms, legs and the skin. Statistics indicate that more than 210,000 cases are diagnosed each year and many more people are living undiagnosed. This serves as clarion call for societies to reduce this stigma by promoting enlightenment campaigns for people to know that leprosy is curable and can be prevented. We will find out those adults that have leprosy and we place them on treatment on time. Then children will be protected from getting the leprosy in the first place. And even if they have been infected and they, they develop the disease, and we, diag we, we diagnose them early, we can also prevent disabilities in them. The day is also designed as a day of prayer to achieve two things, respect, dignity, and quality care for patients, and also greater awareness on the disease for people to change their attitude in order to reduce stigma. In just Ijoma Ozemina, NTA News. As the body of the Second Republic, Vice President Alex Ikweme arrived in Ugu on its journey to occur the final resting place, some elder statesmen in Plateau State have eulogized the late political icon, describing him as a detribalized Nigerian who will be missed for his foresight and contributions to Nigeria's democracy. Runred Lord has the details. A native of Oko in Anambra State, the late Dr. Alex Ekweme was born on the 21st of October 1932. As a distinguished architect and a leader per excellence, many have licensed him to the world's first class scholars. Ekweme was um, a politician, gentleman. Now you either have the gentleman without the politics in them or politics without the gentleness in them. He's well learned, wealthy, and yet very humble and selfless. Elder statesmen on the plateau speak about the missing link between governance during the Second Republic and what is obtainable in the present political scene. You know the politicians now are in a hurry. Many of the young ones, they want to make it in a day. They don't have the patience. Alex Ikweme, I've not heard him establish that he has established estates, factories, other than one that he built in his village. They say the younger politicians have a lot to learn from the octogenarian. Chief Alex Ekweme was the first elected vice president in Nigeria. In just Rinred Lot, NTA News. And that's our package from Jaws Shown. It's back to you. Jaws Shown. And still on the late vice president, as part of activities marking the burial of the first elected vice president of Nigeria, Dr. Alex Ekweme, a parade of honor has been held in Abuja. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju described late Dr. Ekweme as a patriotic Nigerian who would be remembered for his selfless service to the nation and the world at large. Gideon Ifadi reports. <laughs> Receiving the body of late Alex Ekweme at the presidential wing of the Namdiye Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja on behalf of the president and people of Nigeria, Vice President Yemi Oshimbadu says late Ekweme was committed to timeless ideals of integrity, loyalty and kindness to all. When he was asked what his vision was for the country, he said, I'd want to see Nigeria be a nation, not just a country. Who 
those words tell us how committed he was to the unity of this country. And I pray that in death and as we him, that this will not only encourage us, but will also cement the relationship between all of the peoples and nationalities of this country so that we become and remain one. I will pray that his great wishes for this nation and all that is sacrificed for will not be in vain. Senate President Bukola Saraki, Speaker Yakubu Dugara, State Governors, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Ministers and other government functionaries, as well as political associates, were all there to pay their last respect. In Abuja, Jute Onifate, NJ News. Inugo is our next port of call and Chinyere is standing by. Hello Chinyere, it's over to you. Thank you, Sharon. Welcome to Inugu. The remains of former Vice President of Nigeria, late Dr. Alex Ekweme, have been received in Enugu by Southeast Governors in company of the President General Ohaneze Ndibu at the Kanibiam International Airport, Enugu. Ijo Ma Ugweke reports that the brief but memorable ceremony was attended by representatives of various security agencies. As the flight number NAF 918 touched ground at the Kanibian International Airport, the Southeast Governors of Eboi, Enugu, Anambra, and Imo, as well as Igbo leaders, awaiting the arrival of the body of the elder statesman, proceeded to receive him. <laughs> The ceremony was attended by dignitaries from far and near who came to condole with the family of late icon and the people of the southeast for the passing on of a man who left his footprints on the sands of time. <laughs> Isenu chapter of governance support group under the auspices of Global Leadership Support Guild has been inaugurated by its national chairman Emeka Mwajuba. Chino Mwoye reports that members of the group expressed their joy with President Muhammad Buhari administration which they said has left no stone unturned in its efforts to consolidate on the democratic principles and tenets in Nigeria. The Global Leadership Support Guild Group is a global grassroots platform that encourages the ideals of good governance. The national chairman, Emeka Wajuba, noted that despite all propaganda against the present administration, President Muhammad Buhari has shown keen interest in the affairs of all Nigerians, especially the Southeast. In view of this, he said, members of the group have undertaken to give the present administration maximum support for continuity to consolidate on the achievements made so far. KSD represents an attempt to monitor ourselves and give ourselves the task that is needed to drive governance. Other members of the group and good governance supporters who spoke, including the Executive Director, Administration and Training, NTA Headquarters, Abuja, Dr. Steve Abu, all lent their voices and support to the re-election bid of President Muhammad Buhari for a second term in office. Buhari is a friend of the Igbo. The facts are there on ground and we will continue to let our people know the truth. President Mohamed Buhari to win election and the Southeast is fully behind him. Members of the Southeast Zone of the Global Leadership Support Guild group, drawn from Enugu, Anambra, Imo, Abia, and Eboi states, were inaugurated to, among other things, observe, report, and intervene in matters concerning government policies, programs, and projects in Enugu, Chine, Enwoye, NTA News. And that's the much we have for you from here. It's back to you, Shen. Thanks for staying with us. Chinyiri, many thanks. Now, let's talk some business. Nigeria's reserves hit four-year high of $40 billion, just as the foreign exchange market gets additional $210 million. Details with Vivian Idepefo on Business News.
Hello, it's good to have you join us on Business News. We start with good news from the Central Bank of Nigeria, and that is the country's external reserves rose to $40.33 billion from $38.765 billion in December 2017. This shows an increase of $1.56 billion this year. The $40.33 billion reserves represent the highest since January 2014 when the reserves dropped to $40.6 billion from $42.84 billion in December 2013. While the federal government has made $196.3 million Naira from sales of saving bonds in January, the Central Bank of Nigeria Monday injected another sum of $210 million into various segments of the interbank market. The CBN offered the sum of $100 million as wholesale interventions and allocated the sum of $55 million to the small and medium enterprises forex window. Meanwhile, the Naira continued to maintain its stable run against major currencies around the globe, exchanging for 362 Naira to the dollar in the BDC segment of the market. And now to the equities market, where the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed the first trading day of the week with a 1.22% gain at 44,306.48 basis points. Dangote Cement led the gainers chart with a 3.04% gain to close at 268 Naira, followed by Stambik and Fort Oil with a 2.27% and 1.21% gain. Ahead on the loser's chart was Guinness shedding 1.79% to close at 110 Naira. And that concludes business news at this time. The rest of the bulletin continues. And as we take our last break on the network news tonight, sports and weather after. Join us again. House of Representatives Committee on Capital Markets and Institutions will hold a public hearing on the need to intervene in the conflict between the Minister of Finance and the suspended Director General of Securities and Exchange Commission. Date, Tuesday, 30th January 2014. Venue, Conference Room 034, House of Representatives Building, New Wing, National Assembly Complex, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. The Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeshu, Suspended Director General of SEC, Acting Director General of SEC, and all other stakeholders are specially invited to attend. For further inquiries, call Mr. Young Woku on this number or email. Honorable Yusuf Tajuddin, Chairman, Announcer. Kende suffers from indigestion. His twin Taiyi suffers from heartburn. Sometimes it's the other way around, or both. That's why they use Gaviscon Double Action. It soothes within three minutes and lasts for up to four hours. For double relief from heartburn and indigestion, Gaviscon Double Action. Mm, thanks, Mom, for the pig full cream milk. It's so tasty. Dad, you stop taking milk, remember? Yes, my darling. But then my loving wife got me the new peak field milk, which is low in cholesterol to help me stay healthy. Dad, you mean my loving mom that gives me peak full cream milk for a stronger body and sharper mind? <laughs> Here's to the best wife in the world. Here's to the best mom in the world. Aww. Mom, see how my dad and brother are fighting over you. Well, guys, now everyone has a peak. Peak full cream milk and the new peak filled low in cholesterol milk. Enjoy the creamy taste of peak milk, enriched with 20 vitamins and minerals. Thanks, my dear, for always taking care of the family. <laughs> <coughs> Uncle, now see people boss be this, so. Emanuela, go enjoy. Everybody, take comics for an account. Comics is easy to use, just tear, drink, comics. Now easy to use solution for itchy cough. <sighs> no cough! No comics! No comics! No comics! No comics! No comics! Kariwaka! Comics, easy to use. <sighs> Kariwaka! Death all team is visiting schools to teach children how to protect themselves from diseases. Do you know how we get illnesses like diarrhea, cough, and cold? No! 
They are spread through gems which are everywhere. You collect gems that cause diseases. You pick up gems from any surface like when you don't wash your hands after going to the toilet while playing. And then you can get sick because of gems. That's why you need to fight gems to stay healthy by washing your hands and taking your bath with Dettol soap to protect from up to 100 illness causing gems. Wash, wash, wash your hands. What you have to do is bath, bath, bath yourself. Dettol soap every day. Wash, wash, wash your hands. In sports, Nigeria's quarter mile patience to con George seals Commonwealth sport as Nigerians express optimism ahead of the Super Eagles versus Sudan semi-final clash. National.